Okay, today we're going to begin taking the compressible flow theory that we've developed over the last couple of lectures and apply it to the subsonic compressible flow over airfoils. So this is Anderson 11.1 to 11.3. So remember earlier we had linearized incompressible airfoil theory, which was basically from chapter 4 of Anderson, when this was only applicable to Mach numbers below 0.3. Here we're concerned with still subsonic, but in the compressible regime. So basically Mach numbers between 0.3 and 1. Now, to begin, let's go back to the concept of the velocity potential. So, our inviscid subsonic compressible flow is still irrotational. So, we can define a velocity potential. And our flow is also isentropic. So if we define our potential, we're talking about flow over airfoil, so this is in two dimensions, so that the velocity vector is the gradient of the potential as before, then in exactly the same way as before, the definition doesn't change at all. The partial derivative gives the velocity components. But now, in order to develop an expression for the potential, we'll need to consider mass conservation or the continuity equation, momentum, and the energy equation as well. So continuity gives d rho u dx plus d rho v dy equals zero. And if we expand out these partial derivatives, we get rho d u dx plus u d rho dx plus v d rho dy plus rho dv dy. Now if we take the definitions of the velocity components in terms of the potential, we can write this as rho uh, times the second x derivative of the potential plus u phi dx u rho dx plus d phi dy d rho dy plus rho e squared phi dy squared equals zero. And if we group that together, we can just write it this way. Okay, now to get an equation that has only the potential in it, we're going to need to somehow eliminate the density here. And so to start, let's use the momentum equation, which since we're dealing with inviscid flow, that we call the Euler equation, which is just that dp is negative rho v dv on a streamline. But actually, because we're dealing with irrotational flow, this can be shown to be true actually across streamlines as well. So we can write this as dp negative rho v dv 
this is negative rho over 2 times the differential of v squared. So this is negative rho over 2 d u squared plus v squared, where these are velocity components. So then dp is negative rho over 2 times the differential of, now we can write this in terms of the potential, and say this is dp dx squared plus dp dy squared. Okay, now since the flow is isentropic, we know uh, the relationship between the pressure and density changes, right, which is dp d rho is our dp d rho at constant entropy. But this, by definition, is the speed of sound squared. Now, I'm not going to actually ask you to take that on faith, so let's explore why this is the speed of sound squared. So this comes from Anderson 8.3. So if we consider that we have some kind of a stationary sound wave in a moving gas, so our gas is moving this way, and we've got properties pressure, temperature, density, and a speed of sound upstream of the wave, and P plus dP d plus dt rho plus d rho and a plus d a downstream of it. Then we define a sound wave as a as a weak wave. So so dp d rho and all these changes are small. And also the flow is adiabatic. So it turns out that what this ultimately means is the flow is actually isentropic and indeed in this case one dimensional. So continuity then gives us this, that rho times a is rho plus d rho, or this is, sorry, a, the speed of sound is also the velocity of the fluid here. So this is just a sound wave, um, take a motion of a sound wave in the reference frame of the sound wave itself. So we get rho a plus a d rho plus rho d a plus d rho d a. And this we can neglect because it's a product of two small quantities. So from this equation we get that a is negative rho d a d rho. And now if we consider momentum, we get that p plus rho a squared from a control volume form of momentum now again if we ignore the product of differentials when we work out this multiplication what we get is that dA is minus 2A rho dA minus A squared D rho and if we isolate for dA we can get the dA is dP plus a squared d rho over negative 2a rho. Now if we put that back into our equation for the speed of sound here, then what we get is that a is negative rho times dp d rho plus a squared negative 2a rho. And simplifying this, solving for a, we get that a squared is dp d rho. And since we already said that this process is isentropic, then we get that the speed of sound is indeed dp p not rho, d rho at constant entropy. This is what we were looking for. But now let's go one step further and see if we can express this in terms of anything more familiar. So for our calorically perfect gas, given that it's an isentropic process, we know the relationship between the pressure and density changes. Another way of writing this equation is that P over rho to the gamma is a constant. 
which we can call C. So then we can write that P is C rho gamma, or C is P over rho to the gamma. Now, then we can write that dp d rho at constant entropy is c gamma rho to the gamma minus 1 just by taking that derivative which is gamma p over gamma uh, sorry gamma p over rho And since P over rho is RT from the perfect gas law, we get that the speed of sound is the square root of gamma RT. So this is where this familiar expression for the definition of speed of sound comes from.